Good morning, everybody. Uh, hi, Jen, I see you. Look at you, just hustling. I see you. So good morning. Um, I wanted to, we got a couple other people hopping on. Hold on. Um, not here. Others are. Okay, just one second. I know we got a couple other people hopping on. Oh, there he is. There you are. Boom. Okay, what's up, Carlos? I see you. Good morning. So what I'm going to do, hi, good morning, Dina. I see you. Good to see you. Uh, we got Jen on the phone. What I'm going to do is I'll mute uh, everybody. You all should be uh, muted here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I want to go on today's call, typically on Tuesdays, we try to do something other than uh, with your specific real estate business. It could be on the real estate industry. It could be on real estate investing. It could be on, you know, a few other things. But one of the things that I thought uh, we should be doing, hey, good morning. How are you? Uh, one of the things that we should be uh, possibly looking at is some of the benefits that we get from our uh, back office. Uh, I don't know how many times you guys have spent time there, but they have some really cool features that are going to help you with regard to your uh, real estate transactions. So what I'll do, let me just share my screen here a second. I'll go into, oh, that's Heather. You, you, you guys probably don't want to see Heather. You don't want to see me either. You don't want to see Facebook. Where did, where did we go here? Hold on. Stand by for me. Okay. We'll just log in is what we'll do. Boom. Okay. So we're there. <clears throat> for those of you that haven't been here or you haven't spent a lot of time here, um, this is our back office. This is a really cool area. Um, we've got, this is what we call the blend here. All of these articles or announcements are kind of like, you know, envision when you walk into Starbucks and you got a, you got a cup of coffee like I got here and uh, you want to start your day off with some positive stuff. Uh, it could be either from uh, the uh, situation here uh, that we put down on articles or announcements, or we've got a bunch of cool things in addition to this. I'll get to this here in a second. And uh, this, of course, is our calendar. Uh, this is a really cool feature. This calendar uh, can go right into your iCal or your Google calendar. Everything goes to your phone. Um, it's very cool uh, with that. And then they've got a couple of, uh, we got a couple of announcements here. Like, I don't know if you guys know, we have Anton gear. Like if you wanted to get polos or sweatshirts or uh, you name it, hats, uh, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do to promote and you can add your stuff to it. Uh, promote you uh, if you'd like, it's on there. And then we have a ton of articles here um, that are uh, really cool with, um, it has to do with the National Association of Realtors or Realtor.com mag is a lot of these as well. Um, this necessarily wasn't what I wanted to talk about specifically is the back office, but what I wanted to talk about is really how we do um, uh, how we do transactions in that and how this will help you with a transaction. For instance, we had a um, we had a, an, a, an Illinois agent sell a property to an investor in Maywood, Illinois. Uh, and this is the house here. Uh, for those of you that have done a deal in the back office, you'll, you'll see this, is, this looks very familiar to you, but this is the house here. Obviously you can tell by the house, it, <clears throat> it's not the Taj Mahal, and it looks like you know, a, an investor is gonna have their hands full there a little bit, but that's great, you know, no problem. Hopefully it's the worst house on the best block, um, but no worries there. 
What I wanted to show you was a couple of things here. As you're putting in your deals in the back office, you have all of these. Oh, can you guys, uh, Carlos, can you see my cursor moving here? You guys can. Okay. All right. Hi, Susanna. Good morning. Um, <clears throat> so when you see the, the, curse or the uh, cursor go over these things and they change the shading, that's a different stage of the, the transaction that you're putting into the back office. Um, so we have start, showing, contract, pre-closing, post-closing. Um, and each one of these things is pretty unique. They all have different things. When a tab here is orange, that means there are things that are required there, okay? So when we really want them all closed out and we want them green. Um, for those of you that haven't spent a lot of time here, all you need to do is go to this learn tab. And if you go to the back agent overview, there's a, some really cool training videos here. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was watch, I watched this one, gosh, I've watched it probably 15 times, but I watched it again yesterday just to brush up on a couple of things that I wanted to, to promote to somebody. But this would be the first one that I would watch, this uh, back agent training overview. Now it says back agent, that's, you know, our logo is in there when you guys log in, but um, I would go through these and I would go through how to start a new transaction, setting up your inbox address, um, setting up back agent mobile app. So all of this stuff works on your phone. Uh, you know, you can certainly run your transactions and everything that you do from your phone by this. <clears throat> the training overview, that's the video that's up there now. <clears throat> Adding a post, you guys all have the ability to add a post to um, what we call the blend. So let's say that uh, we got a couple of people in here from Florida, we got a couple of people uh, from Illinois, Jennifer and Susanna. <clears throat> um, sorry, uh, let's say that you wanna add a post, like Jen, for instance, just sold a house in Sugar Grove. Uh, congrats, Jen. Uh, in, by the way, in five days, she sold that. In five days, right, Jen? You, you, you've had just a great trainer, I believe. I don't know. But it's a nice, uh, it's a great house, six, uh, almost $700,000 house. So she's doing pretty good with that. So uh, my point is, if Jen wanted to get on the blend and she listed a house, she could put, she could go back to the blend, put a post on here, and it goes out to either all the agents in Illinois or it can go to every agent within Anton. Um, so it's a nice way to market that. Um, I was putting all of our um, training uh, videos on here and things like that, but I, I've really kind of put those more on um, Agent Broker Blueprint in our training segment. So it's freed this up a little bit, but you guys can certainly feel free to do that. I would love it if you guys could put more posts on here. That would be great. Again, this isn't what I was uh, going to talk about. I'm talking about transactions today, but I'm getting, I'm, I got a little carried away there. So in this particular deal, uh, because I was helping uh, another agent we have in the Southwest suburbs of Chicago, Michael Allen, uh, with this deal or with this uh, transaction rather, um, I'm still inputting input, things in here. But if we go to the property, what you'll see is when you hit that, it gives you all the information for the property. All I'm doing is typing in the MLS number. It will fill in the rest. It'll put in the pictures. It will put in all the information that was typed in the MLS. In Illinois, we use MRED. In Florida, <clears throat> it might be Stellar or, uh, you know, uh, well, you guys, uh, let's see. We've got Dina and we've got Carlos. So you guys are on the same MLS down there. <clears throat> so um, it let, let the system do the work for you. It fills all of that stuff in, the square footage, your build, beds, baths, all of that stuff. Uh, you can view the listing detail here. So this will give you a little bit more information. The listing office was called, well, banker, residential. This is the listing agent. Um, you know, and then it'll, it'll give you the list date, which was 217. They listed back in February. It was on the market for 85 days. So if I go back now, let me go back to my previous screen here and I go to contacts. This is something that I, I really, really think that is going to help simplify what you guys do. Um, if you take a moment 
and you put in all of your contacts. This is really your CRM <clears throat> for uh, your business. But notice if you put in all of your contacts, the moment that you start to put in um, any other information, it'll ask you, do you want it sent out to uh, you know, the seller side, for instance, or somebody on the buyer side, or the title agent, which I don't have this stuff in here. It's easy to add that in. But um, it, it really, this is the feature called Roundtable that is really an, a unique feature uh, for this. And it'll make all of your stuff really easy. If you are dealing with the same title company or in Illinois, an attorney, all of the time and you've got the contact in there, it'll ask you, it'll prompt you automatically, hey, are we using Tom Jones, the attorney for this deal? And it, and it goes right in. It sends them all, as soon as you upload information, it distributes it out to your round table. You won't have to sit there and email them separately, just upload it into back office and it goes, uh, it goes automatically. It's really, really cool. Each deal, that you put into place, each deal has um, a uh, unique email address so that uh, if you sent somebody that is party to the deal, the email address for uh, 215 South 13th Avenue, they can email it to you. Guess what? It goes right into your back office for this deal. It doesn't go into any other deal, it just goes into this deal because each deal has their own unique email address for the Anton back office. So it's a, it's a way that when you get um, uh, a deal going, I would take this unique email address and I would send it to um, all the member, and we're gonna have questions here, I know, so I'm gonna, I'll open it up uh, here in a second. But you can send it to um, that email address to everybody in the party so that when they have documents ready to go or they're signed, all they do is send it right back to that email address. It goes into your back office and it'll automatically send uh, any documentation, for instance, for the attorney, because we use attorneys in Illinois, it'll send it right to the attorney without you having to do anything. It's seamless. So uh, if you haven't used that feature, I would definitely suggest that you do that. Um, of course, dates and info, we need some things on here. The system will automatically tell you what is needed here. Um, and it knows that intuitively because of the state that you're in. So we've got in Anton, we've got agents in Illinois, in Indiana, and in Florida. And so it'll ask you, one of the first things it'll do is it'll ask you, you know, what state you're in. And it'll pull those, those docs and basically work within the laws of the state of Florida or the state of Illinois or the state of Indiana. So that's pretty cool. And maybe I'll just start from the beginning and I'll do a deal. Uh, does anybody have a deal that they haven't entered in on the call? You do, Jen? Hold on, let me unmute you. Okay. Yeah. No, I, the one, the one that just went under contract, that's why I didn't enter the uh, MLS number to auto populate. So I went back there and just started the transaction, but okay. I haven't been back in to then enter all my docs, even the listing contract isn't in there. Okay, so um, maybe we'll do that uh, so everybody can see how that works. So you really haven't well, even started that transaction. Is that what you're no, saying? No, and I, and the pro, I, well, I haven't put it in the back office. I mean, I, okay. everything's signed, I just haven't uploaded my docs. Okay, perfect. So let me kind of uh, finish this and then we'll come back and maybe we'll, do you have all those ready to go? I do, but you, you've taken over my screen. <laughs> <laughs> well, what a better way to take over a screen than this, uh, you know, this crazy beard thing I got going on here. I'm not, until we get some normalcy in this world, I don't think I'm shaving. That's a dangerous statement, by the way. That's a dangerous statement. I understand. So, um, okay, so maybe we'll do that, but watch this. It, if, if you let the system do it, its work, it's really going to, it almost acts as your intuitive assistant. How long is the inspection due diligence period? Uh, it's not set, so we need to change that. Is the seller a foreign person? Uh, as defined by FERPTA, you know, things change. A lot more foreign um, 
um, entities and people that are not citizens of the US are buying properties in Florida, for instance. So that uh, becomes a big thing there. Uh, is the seller's agent also a member of your brokerage? Uh, you can uh, address that. All of these things are nice to go through, but every time you do that, uh, all these things are set. All these dates are set and guess where they show up? They show up in your calendar. So when you go to uh, the start page and that calendar pops up, all of these dates here are yours. They're not mine, they're not Anton's. This is a custom calendar to uh, you. So I would really, um, uh, again, recommend using that and, and kind of getting into that a little bit more. Um, so the documents here, um, and I did upload a bunch of documents. I wonder why they're not here. Oh, they're here. Okay. So what I did was um, all these documents, I added a couple of things here, but one of the things I wanted to show you is this email address right here is the specific email address for this deal. So if one of you guys email me on this email address, it goes right into the file for 13th Street or 13th Avenue. Um, it's a pretty cool thing. Uh, so when you're, uh, again, uh, having your client, you wanna have them sign things, give them this, this email and say, this is our deal email. This is our email for our transactions. And one of the, and this could be a selling point, by the way. One of the unique things that we have is the ability to have something called round table so that when you have a document that you need to get to me, such as a disclosure here, all you need to do is email it here. It'll go right into the file and it'll also be distributed to anybody else that needs to see it, a title company, an attorney, uh, anything else. And you can do this with all kinds of stuff, uh, uh, inspections, uh, appraisals, um, you know, any document that you can think of, it'll auto populate with the stuff that it feels like you should have in there. Um, but, uh, you know, it's a really, really cool uh, feature. So that's under the documents. This is the thing that prompted me to have this call with you guys um, is the checklist. Now, this deal is further along and, and I probably need to have Michael do some work in here. I just pulled this up as a uh, as an example, but obviously there's some things that need to be done. When things are in orange here, it needs to be uh, completed. <clears throat> um, you really want all these in uh, gray or, or green um, uh, to, to work properly here and to make sure that those files are complete. But every time you get to a different phase in the deal, from start to showing, contract, pre-closing, and then post-closing, it gives you a new to-do list. And I thought this was really, really cool. <clears throat> I thought this was really, really cool. Um, sorry, my phone was going off there. Uh, so let's go to uh, on the start side and maybe I can take this and move this down just a little bit or over to the side there. Um, check this out. Uh, get any disclosure signed by the client, receive conditional approval letter, send buyer information about home warranties. Now this is on the, the, the uh, buying side. If you, were, if you were listing a property, uh, you would have a different set of, of to-dos on here. It's really, it's really intuitive like that. Send client information about pre-approval letter, uh, getting pre-approved with lender, that should actually already be done. Set up an automated property search to email uh, potential properties. This is when you're starting to work with a client, by the way. It's not necessarily when you have a property under contract. So when you have a client on the buy side and they're looking for a property, um, you're going to enter them in a transaction because remember, you want to do some things when you're starting to work with a client that um, would uh, uh, detail or define that you are in an agency working relationship. Does that make sense? Because we, we just don't want to work with a client and them expecting something and we're doing something else. 
So you have an agency relationship. So you should be putting them into uh, the back office in the CRM, not under property, but under contacts. And you're starting a transaction. They haven't found a property yet that they want to buy. But all of these things uh, should be in as due dates. And when you set a due date, so let me just kind of set that. I'll hit that. Hopefully my internet will catch up here. So it'll ask me for a date. I put in the date, it pops into my calendar. Guess what? When it goes into my calendar on back office, I've got this set up to automatically talk to, because I use Google Calendar a lot. Some people use iCal or Outlook. Uh, if you use any one of those calendars, it'll talk right to it. And all my stuff is right here. When I'm doing a deal, everything is right here. So uh, I might set that date for later, you know, March or sorry, May 31st uh, kind of thing. So this is really cool. Then you're going to start to show properties. You're going to have, this is after you get, you know, a couple of these things done here. This is in the infancy of dealing with a client. And then you're going to start to show properties. Uh, has the contract been executed if they've decided to move forward with a property? Have all parties been notified of the execution of contract? Make an offer on a property. Negotiate until terms are agreed. Receive a fully signed copy of the contract and applicable aden uh, addenda. Um, all of these things should have a due date if you want. If you don't want, that's cool too, but this is a way that you can get organized. So at this point, they're about to or just have put in an offer for a property that you are showing them. Uh, the offer gets accepted and then you go into this phase, which is the contract phase of the transaction. Um, at this point, then you're going to start to put in property information and all you're going to do, uh, like hopefully Jen's got um, here, we'll get to in a second, you're going to pull that information right from the MLS. So Jen, what we'll do maybe is I'll let you take over the screen and did I got you unmuted? Hold on, I'll unmute you. There you go. So what I'll do in a Are second, you? not now, but in a second, is I'll have you take over the screen. <clears throat> you input that MLS number. Is that cool? Yeah, I got to find it. <laughs> yeah, just do, do your thing. You find it. You do the legwork. I got some stuff to do there. I'm, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but I think it's a good learning uh, side here. So okay. now you're on the contract phase. Look at this. So we went from start to showing to contract. Um, at this time, there's a lot more things that you want to have in your to-do in, in setting due dates. This is going to not only keep you on track, but it's going to allow you to um, kind of convey to your client that you're on the ball. I'm pretty sure that other agents or brokers that maybe that particular client has worked with in the past hasn't done this level of detail. And uh, again, it's a way that you, it's a nice foundation for you and your business at what we do here at Anton and our foundation is how we make a better agent, how we build the business of the agent. And this is going to help you this type of stuff. So let's say that you get it under contract. Um, look at some of these to do items. You can set all of these. You can set none of these. You guys get to choose this. It's your business. So uh, did the amendment after the closing date, uh, sales price, option period, or financing period. I don't know, I haven't used that one. Did the buyer waive his unrestricted right to terminate? Has the amendment been executed? Have all parties been notified of the execution of amendment? That's if you have one, by the way. Uh, negotiate repairs for buyer, open, uh, the home for inspection, prepare a request addendum, all these things. And you can add your own if you want, uh, by the way. Um, review the title commitment from the title company, review the inspection report with the client. Um, you know, all these things that uh, you can add there. Again, you can put dates on some of these, all of these, or none of these. Then we go from contract to pre closing. This is the time period that most of the uh, time periods are up for financing and inspection, uh, things like appraisal. 
and you're just waiting to close. So there's some things that you want to make sure that you put into your calendar. Attend the closing with the client, complete a welcome to the neighborhood packet. I don't know if you guys are doing those, but you may wanna do those. Actually, there's companies that do that for you. Uh, so if you, you look into that or you need some resources with that, we can help you. A lot of people purchase closing gifts. Uh, what Heather has been doing is she has a friend of hers that makes these signs out of, um, they're out of, made out of wood and they're made for each season. So uh, like, um, gosh, the winter one says, let it snow and you put it outside your front door. It's really cute. It's, um, um, I'm not into these much, but people are uh, for sure. When she gives them as gifts, uh, people lose their minds over it. And it, it really is neat uh, kind of thing. Um, but if, if you guys get a closing gift for the buyer, you put that in your calendar. Remind yourself. Um, remind the client of the closing in three days. So you're going to put it on your calendar. If we're closing on the 31st of May, you're going to set a reminder in your calendar. It's going to pop up and you're just going to send an email. That's all you need to do. You might even want to follow it up with a call. Hey, Tom, just want to let you guys, uh, remind you guys, we have the closing coming up uh, this Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Uh, at American Title. Uh, we'll see you there. I'll probably be there 15 to 20 minutes early. So if you get there and you have any questions, I'm there for you. So it's a, it's a nice way to round that out. Uh, remind the closing time tomorrow. I would set another reminder uh, these things really make sense, especially when you have busy people. This also comes in handy when you're working with investors. Investors seem to be a lot more busy when they're buying properties. So this, this really does come in handy. Review the settlement statement with the client and cover expected uh, cash to or from. That never happens. Uh, the, the settlement statement and reviewing that with the client and to, and to cover the expected cash to or from is something that never goes on, well, I shouldn't say never, it rarely goes on with the agent and broker to the client. It's a really neat thing to do. Uh, if you don't specific, and part of the reason is we don't get that until like sometimes hours before the closing, right? Title companies are busy. So what I would do is maybe even remind your title company to, uh, that you'd like to go over that with your client a day be ahead of time. So you'd like to have that done. Uh, it's a nice service, especially when you have first time home buyers and they haven't ever experienced a closing before. It's just a nice thing to do on your part uh, with that. And then uh, schedule a walkthrough prior to closing. Uh, maybe you have that in your contract, maybe you don't. But if the closing is the 31st, you may wanna go uh, through the property on the 30th. Uh, this is the one post-closing. So the closing happened, it's over, it's June 1st, the people are uh, moving in or, or already moved in. Watch this uh, to-do list. Add the client to your email newsletter campaign. I don't know if you guys are doing this, but you, you uh, maybe wanna think about that. Um, I get the question all the time, well, John, what do I use? What should I use as an email campaign? There's so many different things that you can use. If you want one that's pretty inexpensive and has a lot of great features to it already built in. You could use MailChimp. Uh, there's constant contact. Uh, you know, there's, there's a couple of other ones that are, there's eye contact. There's a couple of other ones that are, that are just as usable, but those are the ones that probably make most economical sense and they have the most tools with them. Um, the, Let's see, hold on. Uh, ask the client for any referrals. I don't know if you're doing that, but if you go back to module four, an agent broker blueprint, this is one of the ways that we generate leads organically is we follow up with that client and we say, we basically let them know, hey, Tom and Mary, how, you know, they're moved in. It's a couple days after or a week after. You guys settled in. Oh, we love the house. Thank you so much for helping us. Hey, I just want to let you know that referrals are a big part of my business. So if you know anybody that's looking for a house or wants to sell a house, I'm going to give them the same treatment that I gave to you guys. Now, again, it's important to give them, you know, the white glove service, right? The, the, um, uh, you know, the four seasons service. I'm trying to think of the fancy hotels, Carlos. What are fancy four seasons? What's another one? Uh, 
uh, Ritz Carlton. Give them the Ritz Carlton service, right? Carlton service. Yeah, there you go. So, um, uh, and then f this is important follow up call one week after closing to see if there's any questions. This is where you may want to have that conversation. Follow up three months after closing, put that in your to do date. And it has the sign lockbox been taken down off the property. You want to do that, you know, obviously the day of closing or just after. And then the last one, send the one year anniversary gift. That's really important. It could be something small, something little. Hey, just thinking about you one year ago today, you moved into the house of your dreams. I'm still excited for you. I'm here if you need anything. Boom. This type of stuff and everything that I'm talking about here, the, the, the purpose of this, of course, is to service your client. That's, that's the real purpose of this. There's benefits to that though. The benefit is creating a lead source for you guys. Uh, I, I talk to a lot of prospective agents uh, that are gonna be getting their licenses. I talk to a lot of agents that are with other firms. And one of the things that I constantly hear is leads. Where are we getting the leads uh, from? Because they're not getting leads now. Or if they're getting leads through like realtor.com and Zillow and things like that, they're just not high quality. Laying the groundwork in these to-do lists in the five segments of a deal, the start, showing, contract, pre-closing, and post-closing, is where you're going to get organic leads from your client um, in your client's database. It's not as important for you to have this crazy huge database as it is to have clients that had a great experience with you that said, hey, not only would I use them again, but I'm gonna tell everybody I know about uh, Susanna's ability just to take care of us so good and you know, just helping us out every step of the way. So that's why that's important. So let's do this. Uh, let me go back to Jen here. And if you guys have questions, we can, we can unmute everybody. But Jen, do you have that? Um, I have the MLS, but before, I feel like you're going to show my like underwear drawer. So before you do that, <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know we were going, before, that's a different training. That, okay. um, if I can get to my desktop here and I can, do you want me to upload contracts or are we just looking for the MLS at this point? I just want to start. So if you can, here, I'll do it on my end. I'll do it All on right. my end. How about that? The, the. When you, when I saw the, I saw the uh, contacts on your screen for me for yeah. that property. So I don't know if you want to upload it from there, but. So hold on, let's go to, by the way, does this help? Anybody have any questions, Carlos, uh, Dina, Susanna, you guys are good. Okay. So let me, let me go there. I'll go to start and let's go to transactions. We'll add a transaction. And so. Here's what happens. You didn't go this far, right, Jen? No, I did. It's in there. It's on your system. I saw oh, it. It, it just doesn't have a picture. Oh, this one here? Yep. Oh, okay. So, um, actually, how, how far did you get here? I put his, I mean, honestly, I, w I didn't have the uh, MLS number in front of me, so then I pretty much stopped. I put his contact info, but I haven't done the property so as you can see you can't tell what the property is okay i got you okay so um yeah let's let's start over go to property uh, what's that i said go to property where it's orange yeah no absolutely i was gonna say I, I wanted to see if i could do it from the beginning uh let me do that and then we'll come back here um okay. i think that's probably the best way so if i go back here if i go to um transactions and I go to add a transaction one of the first things it's going to ask you is is this residential is it an apartment like a managed building is it commercial or is it referral only uh, like we have a um, uh, uh, an agent near Rockford that does a lot of referrals and so this is how you're going to handle that it's going to put you know the guidelines in for Illinois and handling that as a referral. If you guys are in Florida, the same thing. When you hit referral, it'll follow the guidelines of Florida. So what Jen is, did is she put residential in. It's a sale, uh, right? It's not a lease, but it's a sale. So she hits that. And where would you like to start the transaction? You don't have to start with start. 
you could start with contract because that's how sometimes events happen. But notice all of these five phases are here. The start side, you have just shaken hands with your client, the best practice option that includes a full walkthrough, uh, showing his client is actively searching for a property, you have not yet executed a contract, and then contract. All of these things are defined by that. So now that we did that, so let's just hit start, you're representing the, uh, in this case, you're representing the seller, you are in Illinois, and then you're gonna create that new transaction, boom. When you hit select client, by the way, when you hit that select, sorry, I had uh, my son give me the thumbs up here. When you hit that, uh, create that new transaction and you hit select client, Jen, what's the client's name? Uh, Mike, Pit, Mike Pitstick, but he's already in there. I know, I just okay. wanna show you. So okay. is it Mike or Michael? I listed him as Mike. Okay, but he's already in there. Okay, yeah. Okay, so Mike, huh, it's not pulling up. What's his last name? Pitstick, P-I-T-S-T-I-C-K. S-T-I-C-K, huh. So he's not in my, oh, it'll show up for you. Yeah. That's right, it'll, it's gonna show up for you, gotcha. So let's go to transactions. Let's get caught up with Mike Pitstick here. You can see there's other uh, transactions that are on there on my side. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna go to property here and um, she, uh, the property is required now, please click on set property to the right. So I'm gonna click that. And so it'll ask me, do I wanna find the MLS listing or do I wanna basically enter all this myself? We don't wanna do that, so I'll search MLS. And so I'm gonna put in an address. What's the address? Uh, seven, one, seven, zero, eight. I wouldn't do it this way because it didn't work for me the other day. But anyway, Hannaford Drive, H-A. Well, I'll tell you what, do you have the MLS number? I do. That's how I was going to, okay. It's one, zero, seven, zero, eight, five, seven, five. Okay. Boom. So I'm going to, I type in the MLS number. It already knows M red. Like if you're in Florida, it's going to pull up Stellar or Miami or uh, Northwest, wherever you guys are. But because we're in Chicago, it's M red. We're gonna hit search and look at that. It pulls up the property. Jen Conan is the listing agent. It's 675 and I'm gonna select that. It already knows it's under contract because of uh, what Jen put in M Red already. So what I'm gonna do is I've selected that property. I can change any of these, but I'm gonna set that property now and look at what it does. It pulls up automatically and by the way, it's letting me do this because I'm the managing broker uh, in Illinois, but you guys obviously have the power to do all of this uh, yourself. But it pulls all of this information up. That's a really nice house, a uh, beautiful picture, uh, gives the year built, uh, the rest of the information here. If you wanna view it on Google Maps, you go here. If you want to view the listing detail, you're gonna go here. Uh, we're not gonna do that right now. So she is in the start phase. She's actually past the showing phase. So, uh, and so she's under contract here. So we need to have some things in here. So showings have been done. We click that, that's good. Contract has been done. So let's click that. And you'll notice as we go through here, it's giving us more orange things up here. So under contacts, it says we need three, right, Jen? Yeah. So if we click that, it'll give us what we need. Uh, the buyer, she needs to add the buyer. Uh, the buyer's agent uh, needs to be added. And the seller's attorney. Remember in Illinois, we close with, we use attorneys there. We don't do that in, um, in some other states like Indiana, but in uh, uh, Illinois and Florida, by the way, we use attorneys. So... Um, that is cool. It just tells you what you need. So you'll fill all of that in. Uh, if Mike has a picture, you know, it might, uh, put it in there or if uh, Jen wants to put it in there, that's fine. Uh, and then we go to dates and info. This is real interesting. We have 10 dates and info that's needed right now. This will auto populate your calendar. So your calendar on back office and also your calendar on Gmail or, uh, Microsoft Outlook or iCal. It's really, really important if you're on the road a lot and you're using your phone, 
it's so seamless that when you put this in, how well this works for you guys. So when did your listing take effect? So Jen, let's go through this if that's cool. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I, by the way, I love doing your work for you, Jen. This is great. <laughs> tell Eric. I, I tell love it Eric, too, but, it, tell, but this is really simple. I have to tell you, this part is really simple. It makes it easier. Yeah, and Jen, let me, when Jen uh, first came to Anton, she was fresh out of just getting her license and Jen, should we say technology wasn't a huge strength? Is that what we're saying? <laughs> well, that's why I didn't want you to show my desktop because I have gotcha. documents. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. So, Jen, let's go through this. So, there's 10 items required now. So, when did your listing agreement take effect? Um, I'm looking at my calendar. Sunday the 3rd. Of May? Of May, yeah. And you sold this thing already. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> nice job. So, the next one. We have nine now. When does your listing agreement expire? November 3rd. Okay, so we go to November and we go to the third, excellent. So that's a six month listing. Now we have eight that we need. Uh, what is the ownership status of the property? Traditional resale. Traditional resale, okay. Now we've got seven. When was the property built before 1978? We will say no. Uh, no, it was not, it was built in 2005. I'm just waiting for my uh, internet to catch up with me here. Okay. Uh, will another party get a referral fee for this transaction? No. No. Okay. Uh, when was the contract executed, Jen? Monday the, uh, the 11th. Monday the 11th? Yesterday. Huh. Yeah. I, I got the contract signed Sunday, but it didn't go live until Thursday the 7th. Okay. I'll have to change that. I hit the 4th by accident, but I'll change that here in a second. Uh, what is the deadline date for financing? Uh, well, I mean, how do you want to answer that question? Oh, five days out from the 22nd. Okay. So the 27th? Uh, of June. They're closing June 22nd. So they have to have financing by June. Let me look at my calendar. The seventh, my well, business day is the 16th. 16th it is. Okay, I got that down. Uh, what closing date is on the contract? The June 22nd. June 22nd. Boom, that's a Monday. Okay. Uh, and is the buyer's agent also a member of your brokerage? No. No. Okay. Um, what is the contracted sale price? Am I, am I allowed to disclose? Do I have any? <laughs> well, you're, you're implementing this, so it's yeah. you're putting it in. So that's fine. Uh, it's 680. I love how you were compliant there though, Jen. That's, that's good. <laughs> Uh, and what type of financing is the buyer using? Conventional. Okay, this is real important, guys, because all of this lending stuff is changing right now. Um, you know, if you look at Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, uh, um, FHA, conventional, they're all changing. So you really want to kind of understand what type of loan they're getting. You should have already talked to this, which I'm sure Jen has, with their client or with I'm sorry, with uh, the other agent because they're representing the buyers. Okay, one item is required. I know I need to change a couple of things there. Uh, what type of financing conventional option? What amount is being financed? Do you know that, Jen? Uh, it's a 70% okay. loan to value. So let me do the math. <laughs> sorry. No, you're fine. 476. Okay, perfect. Okay, so 476, that's being saved. All these dates are here. I did need to change one date, and that was what? Does anybody remember what that was? Contract date, right? It was the 11th. No, well, I had them sign the contract on the 4th, and I don't know what you all do, but in my listing contract, it says, you know, it doesn't go into the MLS until 24 hours after receipt of photographs. 
So it didn't well, go I'm into- talking to, I'm talking about the sales contract. Oh, that was the 11th. The 11th. Okay, so that's the 11th. Let's change that. I hit that button by mistake. Okay, so right now we've got um, um, all of these dates in here. Uh, what's interesting about this is she'll have to go back in and put the contacts, but do you see how the date in info went from orange to gray here? That's what we want. Notice though, we've got documents. There's six documents that the system is saying that we need. So if I click that, um, this is what the system is saying that we need. Uh, listing agreement, so she's got to up, uh, upload that. Uh, residential real property disclosure, that's going to be uploaded, I'm sure. The contract, there may or may not be some things that we will have in here for different reasons, but uh, most likely the contract, lead-based paint disclosure, mold, radon, residential real property disclosure, uh, which we have up here. Um, and then what's required later is the HUD statement. It'll, it'll uh, let you know that. Just like before, we've got another sp specific email address to this deal, Jen. So you could give this to your other counterpart. Uh, who's, who's the uh, buying side agent? Uh, Kathy Peters. And what, with what company? Oh, Remax. Okay, so what you would do is just send this to her, to Remax, and say this is the email address specific to this deal. So when, um, you know, if they have any information that they want to send in, they can send it right to here. Same thing that you're going to do. This allows them also, it's something called Roundtable. We're going to go into this in a second, where they can actually get into this and they can see all of these docs that they need to see. It's a it's part called uh, Roundtable. And what I'll rather than go into that now, I'll have you go to the Learn button, and there's a whole training video on that, uh, which is really cool. The whole purpose of Roundtable is to save time for you guys. So uh, let's say the situation was reversed, and Jenner is representing the buyer. Um, the the listing agent really should have a lot of these disclosures already done. And that could be something where they could easily put that into this email uh, here rather than send it to you and then have you upload it. It goes right into this deal and you don't have to do anything. So that saves you time. So Jen, you're going to do that. But the other thing that I was going to mention, Jen, if you go to your um, back office desktop, are all of those dates in your calendar? Can you check that for me? On, on Anton? Yeah, the Anton back office. If you go into the calendar there, all of these days should be in your calendar. Oh, 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 I see. Well, I don't know if I can do it on my laptop. If you can't, that's fine. Well, I have to, you have to move. <laughs> Just hit, that's okay. I got you. So it, these are going to be in your calendar, Jen. So these okay. will all be reminders. Uh, your to-dos, by the way, your checklist, because you're, you haven't got to pre-closing yet, you're here at contract. We could probably check that box, however, and go to pre-closing. Um, but we've still got some things to do. But I just want to kind of show you some things here. Notice your checklist has went from, I believe, 24 now to 30. So these are some items that you should be, again, going over, setting some dates so that you don't miss anything. It's really a, a pretty cool uh, thing. So when we started, watch this. Add the listing to the MLS. Add your photos to the MLS listing. Contact the customer and get the listing property information. Gather information for relevant addenda such as HOA, utility district, and uh, known defect disclosures. Get any agency disclosures signed by client. Uh, get the listing agreement signed and initialed. Get the seller a seller's disclosure form, um, uh, list with a showing service for appointments. Um, that's like your MLS showings. Uh, make sure lead best paint. All of these things are going to remind you as the listing agent on what you need to do. Put your sign in the yard. Send the homeowner a client listing worksheet. Do you guys have one of those? Are you using one of those? Um, take pictures of the home. Are you having somebody else? Like in your case, Jen, I think you have Bob take pictures. 
yeah. or do, do a video. So you, that's going to remind you to get that done. This is a great way to add your to-do list here uh, for that. When showing start to happen, you have a new set of to-dos. When you're under contract, you have a new set of to-dos. And then post-closing and then eventually, uh, sorry, pre-closing and then eventually post-closing. That's really it. This is what I, I know you have a question then. This is okay. where, where I wanted to let you guys know these are great, this is a great way to manage and run your business that most agents that, that are not really kind of performing, they're not using this level. Some are and some are, are doing a really good job, but most agents aren't. And this is what is gonna make the difference for you. I'm gonna go into these last two things after Jen's question if you guys have a question you know now would be the time so jen okay if you go, if you go back to documents and you said that this transaction has a specific um email right or yeah. at yep. the bottom and then i think i heard you say that the buyer agent could get in and see this under round table yes okay. so i have to i'm just curious when you say that because i haven't seen how that works yep i guess my question would be if i've gone ahead and put in my uh listing contract would they be able to see that yeah so um if you go under back agent recaps here uh and you go under roundtable sharing i would suggest that you watch this video um, okay. it's a really good, actually we can watch it now. It's two minutes and they have some more detailed ones. Let me, let me put this on, watch this. Can you guys see that? Mm This is just a brief thing. There are two ways to share your transaction to the round table. To get started, choose a transaction. You can click on the documents tab. Choose the documents that you would like to share. Send and share. Share to Roundtable. To the right of the screen, you will see the documents that you're sharing to the Roundtable. To the left, you can choose the person that you're sharing those documents with. Click Share Now. You can also share to the Roundtable by clicking on the Contacts tab. To the right of the screen, you'll see the share transaction button. The first section is for intranet sharing. So that's sharing internally. You'll want to choose roundtable sharing. Pick the person that you'd like to share the documents to. It must have an email address on file. Pick the documents. You can also share any notes that you've added to the transaction and simply click update shares. You can also go back and remove things that you've shared to the round table by simply clicking add or update shares from the context tab. Okay, so did everybody see that? Uh, that is, I'm gonna get out of my screen here. There we go. So that is a way, again, that you can um, share to the round table to all the people that you're looking to uh, have as part of that transaction. Now let me go back to this one here. What a beautiful house, Jen, that's so cool. So you, you can see we still have some things here that are orange that we wanna turn gray. You know, that's what we really want with our transaction. That's how we know we get to these uh, different six, five, six phases here. And then 
these are two things that I love that are really nice. Uh, again, if you go, if you downloaded the app, which is free on your phone, you can uh, maneuver your transactions and see your transactions through your phone as well. So if you're in the car, out in the field, this is a great way to uh, still manage your business. But watch this. This is again another way that uh, a lot of agents don't really handle their real estate business like a business. A lot of the things that you're doing are write-offs to you. So in other words, you're going to get a commission check, Jen, for this property, and it's going to be a healthy commission check at a $700,000 property. Nice job. And uh, you want to make sure that you're keeping the most of that money. You're keeping the majority of that money. And uh, uh, so you're going to have expenses with that. So what I would do is I would add expenses here. So you've had expenses of marketing, perhaps you've had expenses of mileage and gas. You've had other expenses that you might uh, have with that seller. This is a great way to track those expenses to that particular deal. And at the end of the year, you print out this stuff, turn it into your uh, accountant or CPA, and this is an operational expense to your business that will allow you guys to keep more money. I'm, I'm telling you, most agents don't even think about this stuff. They might think about it, you know, April 14th, but uh, this is a great way to organize yourself uh, so that you're really thinking business-wise rather than, you know, just getting that household or representing that client. Because after all, this is a business that you want to make sure that you're building a really good foundation to. This is a really neat uh, thing. You just add the expense here, boom. Uh, was the expense for marketing of vehicle mileage. You put it in and then you add the expense. It's really cool. The last thing are notes in history. What a great way to add notes. Uh, you can see this is it. By the way, this is the other thing I forgot to tell you. All of these entries here for today, this is me. It shows exactly who was in here, exactly what they did, so that at any time I can go in and see, okay, great. Uh, on 5 11, Jen created the transaction. Um, uh, at 3 38 p.m., the transaction phase updated to start. You know, all of these things I can go in and check on that. This is great if you have, uh, you might be working with an assistant. I know Carlos is getting an assistant. Uh, so this is a great way to see their work uh, and having them, um, you know, whether it be an unlicensed assistant, they go in and do the, the, you know, dirty work here. You can see everything they've done and when they've done it. Uh, you can also see if you've sent something to Roundtable and who's entered in. So let's say that you invited somebody to Roundtable and they submitted a uh, a document like a title company or I'm sorry a lender submitted a clear to close and it was just a, a document that they submitted and they submitted it to roundtable you'll see when that is and it's live here this is great for not only organizing each and every transaction but it's also great if there was ever an issue you know exactly what happened at what time and it's all logged here uh, so uh, pretty cool stuff we got, we're at the top of the hour. I know I've taken a ton of your time, but I really just wanted to exploit some of the cool stuff that this thing does and how, you know, this is all included in your uh, stuff with Anton and, and hopefully you guys can start using that. If you can though, one favor, if you can look at this start page, if you guys can start, you know, maybe putting some stuff in the blend here, checking out some of these articles or train, some of the trainings are on here. There's a lot of community posts here that has great information uh, and it's pretty up to date. Like this is May 12th, unemployment report. Uh, you know, May 11th, will home values appreciate or depreciate? By reading this stuff, this is where I think it's kind of like Starbucks when I started uh, today's training. If you read some of this stuff, you're going to be up to date on what's going on in the market. You're going to be an educated agent and, and you're probably going to be uh, putting yourself in a better position to service your clients. You had a question, Carlos? No, you're good. Oh, Susanna, hold on one yeah. second. Yeah. Susanna, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, Susanna, oh, absolutely. Perfect. Good morning. Um, question about the blend. Uh, yeah. When we have a property, you said to put it in there to contact agents. So are they going to get it through their email or how? Yeah, you'll get, when, when something goes in the blend, 
Uh, these are all Anton agents. They'll, you can either select, hey, send it to the whole company or just send it to Illinois agents. Or if you just want to send it to Florida agents, Susanna, you're in Illinois, Susanna. So you're in oh, what, Hoffman Estates, right? Right. So, so um, and by the way, how, Jen, how far is Hoffman Estates from Aurora? Pretty close, right? <laughs> eh? I don't know. Ask my husband. <laughs> okay, gotcha. So, uh, so yeah, Susanna, you can put it in and dictate where this goes. You can send it company wide. You can send it just to Illinois agents. You can send it to wherever you want. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. So, in other words, then we don't have to uh, buy additional like email blasts. Not if you don't want. No, I mean, if you have a database that you have outside that you're wanting to do like a CRM uh, type of thing, you could certainly do that if you wanted to, but uh, no, to communicate to everybody here, not at all. No, not at all. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, okay, cool. Anything else? You guys all good? Yeah, we're good. Okay, so again, uh, Jen, congrats on your new, she listed this property five days ago and it's already under contract. So nice job there. I know all of you guys are, are hustling. If you need anything, I'm here. Uh, just let me know. It was a pretty cool training today. We'll, uh, maybe I'll, I'll do this more with the back office. There's a lot more stuff on here I could show you. Like, uh, for instance, Marketplace, which is a great way to anyway we'll we'll talk about that later but uh so yeah have a great week everybody we will talk to everybody soon if you need something i'm here i always end this uh my uh conference calls and webinars with this remember wealth has nothing to do with money success has everything to do with failure and life is as simple as you can make it thanks a lot guys we'll talk to everybody real soon bye bye